OK, so let's implement transformer in Python. So like, let's jump to the hardest one. It's multi-header attention layer. It is a attention layer, but we have multiple small attention there. Um, as we mentioned before, we need to pro we need to project the query keys and values into the some space. So here we make it simple. That is, the attention layer only have a single unit, which means we project all the keys, queries, and the values into the same uh, length. So make it easy. Also, lump of head. This is kind of what the part of the attention we're gonna pre uh, project, and the dropout, which is applied to the uh, attention cells we have. So internally, we have, this is an actual attention, attention layer. It's a dot product attention layer, which will fit in the project data M. And we have three projection metrics for query, for keys, for values. For each one, we project to the same uh, units here. And then for the attention layer, let me, okay, uh, that's, <laughs> let me, maybe I can just show uh, these slides. Okay, um, well, doesn't work. Uh, anyway, so the first thing we want to do here, given the query, we project the query, and we project the key, and project the value. And then we want to do a little bit of transformation to make we can fit into the attention layer, because the attention layer accepts the 3D input, the batch size, the number of length, and the, the feature dimension. But now we have number of heads attentions. We want to make just a, a simple one. So what we can do here, let me draw something. Um, so for example, this is one head. This is the feature size, the sequence length, and the batch size. We need to do number of heads such things. What we can do here, we can just concat here, like, uh, by number of heads times, and then make, basically make this one like a batch size times the number of heads we have, and fit into a single attention layer. We can just reuse what we have before. So here the function called transpose uh, QKV is kind of project the input size, batch size, number of items, this is sequence length, and the units into, like the units will be like, um, the feature size times number of heads will be equal to the units we have. So we just uh, reshape it to batch size times of number of heads, and the number of items, the sequence length, and then P. P is actually the, the feature dimension we have for the internal attention layer. Assume we already do that, then also valid length, we will talk about valid length later, how we can actually use a valid length, and then let me, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, let me just delete this comments so that we can have more space to f see that. And then just fit the query key values, value length into the attention, cell we, uh, attention layer we have. Get output. The output will be have the first dimension will be batch size times the number of heads. We then transform back so that um, we just form, tran transpose back from like batch size, number of heads, and the number of units we have. Okay. So basically what we do here, we project the query key values, and then shuffle a little bit uh, to match the attention uh, layer data format, and run the attention and then uh, transfer back. So this is kind of multi-head attention layer. Um, so we can, sh um, maybe a how we define the thing, given x, given number of heads, we first reshape into a 4D dimensions. Keep the batch size, keep uh, the number of items, the sequence length, and number of heads break the last dimension, the number of heads and the feature dimension is minus one is actually the P we had before. Then we transpose, we move like, uh, we move the second dimension into, the, into here. So zero means we keep the same, but here the second dimension will be the third one we had before. We move the number of heads into the second dimension. And so once they move here, this dimension here into one and keep the last one. Okay, reshape, we transpose, and then we just reshape, like we merge the last two dimensions into a single one. The trick here is that zero means copy. 
I can reshape from zero means I copied the calling size. And we copied the last two, and the minus one will let the system to infer what is the shape you should have. It's a batch size times the number of heads or number of items we have. So we use reverse equals two that tell the system first match the last one, copy, and the copy the last dimension, and they infer the last one. So basically how to merge the first two dimensions. Similar thing for transpose output, just to reverse the stage. Uh, we first uh, split, like we split the first dimension to batch size equal the number of heads and the transpose and the reshape again. So that is basically uh, what we did here. So okay, let's see example how we can run this cell. Given multi-head attention, so this is our, this output size, the unit, which is the, output, the feature size of the values. And number of heads, uh, the number of heads should be divided by the, the units. Otherwise, otherwise it's like uh, it's, you need to take care of other things. A uh, dropout you could do 0 0.5. Initialize it and fit into x the batch size equal to 2 and the sequence length is 5. The feature is, uh, sequence length is 4. The feature size is 5. We fit into the value length, so we just pick on any one. Like uh, the first example uses two, the f second example uses three. So, which means the first example only look at um, the first two keys. The second example we only look at the three, the first three keys and the uh, attention. And then we can get the shape. The shape will be keep the batch size. We didn't change it. Keep the number of the sequence length, the number of items here, four. But the, but we change the dimension from five to the number of units we have, 100. So think about the attention layer, the multi-head attention that we, the number of units only change the last dimension of the input. The input will be 3D arrays. So that's the only thing we change. And the number of heads is internal things. You can change to anyone you want. But usually you pick up eight, like 16 or 32, like depends on the complexity we have. Okay, so, Another one, the key, still remember that is what is position-wise feed-forward network. It's basically, we can call it like uh, it's a one by one convolutional layers, or we can implement just by using two dense layers. The first dense layer, the, this is the unit, this is the uh, output size. And we have additional thing called the hidden size. And so we first project into hidden size, it's a hidden size dimension MLP, first project in the hidden size, the flatten equal to force, make it position-wise. Basically, we are only apply to the last uh, feature. Uh, we keep the sequence length and the batch size. And we use the activation here. The last one also uses the flatten equal to force, but don't use any activation. So this is just a single hidden layer, a multi-layer perceptual. And the fourth function just given x fit into the first layer, and fit into the second layer. That's all about that. Okay. If you see, um, we create multi-layer uh, like uh, FFN position-wise FFN. The output size equal to four. The internal hidden size is eight. Usually we can we should use a little bit larger hidden size. The typical way we are doing is, is the number of hidden size equal to two times of the output size. And uh, we initialize it, render initialize it. The only thing we want to show here is that we fit into two batch, uh, batch size equal to two, three items, the dimensions of four. Like we actually, uh, because this four equal to this four, we didn't change the output size. But the only thing I want to show you here is that this is the first example, which is three by four. Three is the sequence length, the times dimension. Four is the f features here, because the input have the same input value for this timestamp, which results, the output will have the same values for each timestamp. You can see that the first row equals to the second row. So this is, this dense layers only apply the last dimension of the features. So you get the same weight applied to the different timestamp in the sequence. Okay, so that is uh, which make like the dense layer have uh, uh, compact model uh, capacity so that it's not overfitting too much. The other one's called add at the loom. 
Uh, the first one, we show that what is the layer loan. We mentioned that there was a layer loan between layer loan and batch loan. Layer loan compute the mean and the variance across the last feature. The batch loan compute the mean and the variance in the first dimension, is the batch size. So here we give two examples. And so layer loan just earn dot layer loan. Batch loan is earn dot batch loan. You don't have anything to specify. And so we can, also the tricky thing here that uh, we need to put all the things into the autograd record. And so that we can get a correct value. Um, so put the x, any x here, you can see the layer loan and the batch loan difference. The layer loan, the mean between the last dimension should be zero. You can see that this is the last dimension, so this is almost uh, minus one, this is one. So the last dimension, every last dimension, we have zero mean and unit variance. And also similar thing for the, the second, um, this is kind of the, okay, the, the second time step. Well then, for batch loan, we can see that the first row column we have, we have zero uh, min and unit variance, as similar as for the second column. Okay, so that's the major differences we have. So okay, here's a question. Why we want to have, put all the things into the autograd record here? If we do, if we don't put thing here, uh, so you will get something different. Let me, let me show you. Let me, I didn't run the first hell. Let me run that one. Well, okay. So if you don't do that, you can see that it's not normalized anymore. If you put it into that, uh, you get the result we want. If we don't do that, things changed. Do you know the reason? Sorry. And the reason, the reason they actually want to switch the training mode. Yes, you want to switch the training mode and inference mode, but why switch this one take the difference, uh, like uh, the different output? Okay, remember what we said in the batch loan. Like, the reason is because, oh, you, you can. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay, so the reasons kind of very close. The reasons are because during during training, you actually compute the mean and the variance for each batch you input. But during inference, remember we have a global mean and the variance. We fix it. We hope that during training we have a good global mean and the variance across the whole input data. So during inference, we just use a global one. The reason we cannot using the uh, during the inference, because inference, we maybe use batch size equal to one. If only batch size equal to one, batch norm, we are not have, we are not able to compute the mean and the variance. So in the inference model, we're just using the mean and the variance computed before during training. We save into the parameters. So that's just why you want to get the correct estimation of um, the, the input, you don't want to put on the training mode. That's kind of uh, tricky if it, um, a few layers which behave different. Another one is dropout. Dropout apply dropout during training, but if you inference dropout, we do nothing. So that's another difference. Okay, so then we know how to get the layer loan. This block is pretty easy. That is, like, uh, and you have two inputs. The x is the the. Um, X input to a block, the previous block, and the Y is the output. What we do here, we apply dropout to the output and do a residu residual connection here and adding to the layer loan. That is about that. Okay, so uh, example here, uh, why this example is here. Um, so this one, this one, because we need to have residual connections which make any block we want to do that, we have the same input and output shape. So X and the Y should have the same shape. Because we apply all this, like, uh, um, add loan to uh, multi-layer head attentions and point-wise uh, FFN, which means we cannot change the input shape and output shape for all these uh, two blocks. 
Okay, so given the input shape two, three, two by three by four, and another input shape also be two, be two by three by four, and output will be the same shape. So that's the thing. That's a constraint you have. So which this constraint make uh, the transformer arch new architecture pretty simple, actually. You only have a single hindrance uh, units and cross the whole network. We will show that. Also, that's also make why the self-attention only have a single unit. So because you, you, cannot change, uh, you cannot change the input and output shape. Okay, so the last one's kind of the positional encoding. Uh, we, during the last week, we, we actually skip what's the thing here, but I also, I also skip what, and the, the only trick here that you create a P, a large enough P, which is a position bias. It's, it's a fixed element. And then given X input, we just adding P here. We just generate so long P that no matter what X you have, we just put the calling uh, values to that. So we're gonna skip this one, but uh, we want to visualize what it looks like. So, so this one, we generate uh, a position encoding. We fit into 100 sequence lengths. 20 is the number of dimensions we have. So each line here is visualized pick up one dimension, visualize the values across the 100 sequence, like one the sequence lengths. You can see that because they're using cosine uh, sine and cosine function, you can see that each dimension, like uh, four and six, actually using, I don't remember, four and six should maybe using cosine uh, anyway, but um, they're using cosine but using different frequency. And between four and five, the difference is one using cosine, one using sine. So which means for each feature, uh, we're using, this, using different frequency uh, cosine or sine to present the sequential information there. Okay, and according to different um, uh, features, we are using different frequency. So that is kind of adding the sequential information into the, into the input. And a question here, is it a little bit weird that you do such a thing? So, um, well, that's a simple way that adding sequential information. But the other way, yes, you can learn that. You can learn uh, um, that kind of uh, the P here to learn that according to some parameters, learn the sequential information. But here, the transformer is just using a simple one. Okay, so, so the idea that even uh, we have two identical items in, uh, in the time, different time step, if it's that, then the transform, because you cannot take any sequential information, you cannot distinguish these two things, but now we're adding a positional P here, uh, these two identical items in different time step, we have adding a different value, so which make them different. So that's, just, that's the major pu uh, purpose here. Okay. Any questions? But that's, that's one choice. So, so, so that is one of the not so nature thing in transformer. Um, because transformer cannot distinguish different time, also the position wise FFN, we need adding some sequential information here. That's one way to do things. Maybe not the elegant way, but it kind of works in practice. So also like, uh, also one, feed, uh, one drawback of all this attention uh, transformer models that because the time sequence information is so like uh, so weird added, which is very not not very good at predicting next words. In the language model, we are using LSTM to predict next words. The LSTM every time I read the previous time step fit into the next one, the next time step we rely on previous time step. It's a sequential information. So which makes it's really good to remember the sequential information in the sequence. So which make the RRM models is very good at like a language model to predict the next time and also like uh, um, to do a stock prediction if you do the homework, last the homework, if it's the hardest one. And, but transformer here is not so good at predict the next words. Because every time the transformer will look around all this key value, all the past time step, all the key value pairs we have and I only look one back. 
So hope the, the information contains all the things we have, but transformer, I don't care. I, I just look around all these key value pairs. So which makes transformers really good at like to have a long term information. Every time it looks so long range, which makes it very good at understand all the sequences structures here. It's not so sequential, but it's very good to understand the whole overall the sequence information. And also it's good at the long sentences ones. Okay. Okay, so we all about how to the three uh, four, imp four layers, new layers we have, we already implement that. Now let's Im implement the encoder block, which is a single block in the encoder. So the block, we have a multi-header attention. So hope you still remember what this the encoder looks like. So this is the encoder block we have. So one multi-header attentions, one position-wise FFN, and two add the norm. So we, now we do that, attention layer, and two add the norms, and one positional wise FFM. And we have single units here, see that? The block have accept the single units. The input should have the same uh, feature size and output the feature size we are the same. But the FFM, we are using the additional hidden size here in the internal hidden layer. So the for the function is pretty easy. Like given X, we copy X three times and put as key value and uh, query, make it a self attention. Then get output, and both input output, we are to the add alarm to have a residual connection. Okay, the output we say is Y. Similarly, we put a Y into the FFN here, and also the input Y, we add into the second add alarm residual block. So that is the encoder block. If we just stack multiple encoder block, we will have the encoder, um, uh, let me show you example here first. And like this is the output size, the hinder size is usually two times larger than the output size. And number of heads, um, you should divide it by like uh, 24. Then the input size is two, batch size equal to two, number of sequence is 100, the dimension will be 24. So these two numbers should be matched because of the residual connection. And then output size, we, are, we don't change anything. It's just a still like two by 100 by 24. So it's make like a conceptually easy, same input, same shape output. So that's a uh, residual, residual block. Uh, not residual, it's like a transformer block. Okay, so now we can define the encoder. The encoder is actually also pretty easy. And let's go back, have one embedding. This is token embedding, word embedding, positional encoding, and unrepeated block. That's all about encoder. So we have an embedding layer, a positional embedding layer, and have a number of layers, like just a repeat a bunch of encoder block, and every block have the same units and hidden size because you need to pick up the unit the same. Which means the unit equals the embedding size. So the vocabulary size depends on the data. But the units is kind of what we can control that once given the same units, all this embedding output, all this, all this like, uh, uh, like a transform block, we have the same units. So, so ideally that's pretty, uh, conceptually that's pretty simple. We just keep the same shape, the same number of uh, the vector length. Okay, in the forward, you put X into embedding. The only thing here, we just uh, using a square root of uh, lump of units here. The idea here is that when you have, when the unit is large, the embedding output, each element should be, the value may be small. If the embedding element will be small, because the position of embedding, we don't change the value. It's always like between zero and one, and then which make the embedding like sequential information may be too large. So we just uh, times square root of number of units such that if we increase the number of units, it's relatively still large compared to the sequential information we have. Okay, so that is one trick. And fit into the, encode, the position encoding. And then for each block, we just fit X and the value the length to each block. So we can get, uh, we can return X as the output. So this is the encoding output. 
take, a, take another example. And so this is um, like 200, or oh, sorry, 200 vocabulary size. 24, 25, this is the output size. 48 is hidden size. We're using eight layers. And uh, no, no, eight is the number of heads, two layers, and drop out. And given, given the batch size, number of sequence, the only change is, is we're adding a sec loss of dimension, which is a feature dimension. 24 will match the number of units we have before. So that's all about the encoder. OK, so encoder, take batch size times number of sequence length input. You will get batch size times sequence length times the units, the feature dimension we have. OK, so that is kind of the encoder. Any questions so far? OK, let's go to the decoder. Decoder is pretty similar to encoder. Why the decoder doesn't show that one? Let me. OK, the decoder. Oh, decoder is bigger. Let me again only show the code, like uh, easy to read. So decoder a little bit longer. Like, uh, the major difference here is that we have additional multi-head attentions whose like, keys who have like uh, take the state, the encoder output here so that we can, this way, how, this is how we pass information between encoder and decoder. So that is the only difference here, the additional multi-head attention here. Okay, let's show how to implement them. So this this is a this is a single block, and we have one multi-head attention, the second one, and three add norms, and the last is position-wise FFN, FFN. So that is the number of layers we have. Then the four is a little bit different here. Like, uh, um, let me show that. Maybe I can just remove. Let me try to just remove this one. Hope you still understand that. So we have two different things. One to do like, um, uh, one's for inference, one's for training. So let, let me explain that, how we do inference and training. For training, the, th the key thing is that, because transformer is like bidirectional, Remember that we say that in the sequence-to-sequence -sequence model, we cannot use a bidirectional LSTM for the decoder because I don't want to have information passing in the future. If we decode in the t step, time step, we don't want any information from t plus one, t plus two. So that is, otherwise we behave different than inference. So during training, what are we doing here that, and to, for the time t, Time t only, so for the query here, I, don't, I only want to lo look at the key value pairs from the previous time. I don't want anything beyond that. So I want mask as zeros. So what I can do is like I can, for time t, I can put the valid length to be t. That's all, like I only, I only want to query the key value pairs in the up to here. Adding zeros on the softmax score of the other thing we have before. So that is the key thing here. And then this is for training. For inference, we also mentioned that it's a little bit different. For inference, we need put all this here as key and the values, but only keep the current T as a query to the input because we only want to work this one and do uh, again, get output and fit into back into that. So that is kind of uh, difference here. So which make the decoder a little bit more complicated. So here we have additional state with two. This one like uh, contains the past queries for this block. The I, because we, the I is like the, the I's block in the decoder. So this block is I because we have, un um, blocks here, and so this is the i. So, if nothing there is, you mean this is the first time. 
I just the key value pairs just the current one, the, the current one here. So previous have nothing here. Otherwise, we have the key value pairs will be, so this is state we, so this is the state we put into the, this is part of we put into state. So the key value pairs will be the past t minus one, like output with the current x into the, uh, into the tension layer. Okay, the second one is like, if it's training, then we want to generate the valid length. So it's a range between one and the sequence plus one. So if it's time zero, actually we give the valid length equal to one. We only look at the current myself. If it's a lot of time, which is sequence length, uh, mm, uh, the length will be sequence length. Okay, so this is the valid length. And if it's, for, it's a training, we have valid length. If it's inference, we only decode a single one at any time. We don't need a valid length. So, okay, so this is one. Let me delete this comments. And let me show the last. Uh, okay, so the last one is that the first attention will be um, the self attention. That is x, key value pairs, key value pairs, and the valid length. Okay, then we add into the x and the, uh, this is called x2, we add into the, the loam. The second one is like, um, so we just, the picture we have is actually wrong. This is the input from the previous one, it has queries. And then the keys and the values is just the encode output. We copy the encode output to both key and the values. So this is the second, so, uh, so, this is the second one. So this one is wrong, actually. We, I should copy this error by two. So this, the output here only used as a query. So the state from the previous one will be both used the key and the values here. Okay. So the last one is similar, like uh, fit into um, just FFN and add along here. So in overall, the difference here is that, so the first the multi-head attention is, ma is masked during training the time t only give red length equal to t. I want to prevent the information from the past, uh, in, the past in, the, in the future to go here. Once you stop the future state here, I don't need to worry about any more. And so now I can, now I take, using a multi attention take the encode output, how to pass the information there. Lastly, because this, this one run in parallel, I also don't need to care about the future um, information here. Okay, so lastly, we have a dense layer. And, um, well, I don't have dense layer here, but we, we have dense layer ladder. But, uh, we have dense layer a lot in the uh, decoder block. So then, um, similarly, the decoder bro block didn't change the input shape. Given the input shape, we will get the same output shape because of the residual connections. Lastly, and the encoder, decoder is very similar to the encoder, only uh, embedding layer, position layer, unrepeated the decoder block, but we only have the dense layer. The dense layer output size will be the vocabulary size. We want to predict for each vocabulary, okay? So I'm also flatten equal to false because 3D inputs. So um, the interstate, we have um, the encode output, uh, like uh, the encoders, it's called the encoder, should be not the environment, like encoder valid length and the additional thing. So here, this is the state we can uh, save for the past the key and values. Okay, so for the past, it's pretty easy, very similar to we had it before. Like uh, we give a state, we run the embedding times the square root of the units, put it into position, position encoding, and it runs into all the blocks and finally, we project X by the dense layer to get the vocabulary size output. Okay, so that is the encoder layer. Um, any questions so far? Question. Yeah, how the future is blocked? Um, so the key thing here, Okay, the key thing here is that um, given the multi-head attention layer, the single-body water attention layer, 
you put it into like multiple things here, and we put this t here. So this is different time, t minus one, t plus one. In default, to generate this t, we will look, we will compare the score between these guys across all these guys to get a uh, soft mass score and do a weighted sum over all the things. So basically, we compute the score here. This is the soft max score, and just to times the score with the input to get the output. So this is the output. To block it, I don't, I don't want, I don't want information from here. I want to set all these things to zero. That's the only thing. If I set all this into zero, all this in feature into zero, I block all these links from here. So to generate this output, I only look into the current time and the previous time inputs. By doing so, we just tell, remember how we implement the tension layer that we can have a valid length. Valid length make you, this one, only the sort max only compute on the three, the, on the previous three time step, or the up to t. All these things we give uh, zeros here at the end. So which means you don't compute this one, don't have anything behind. And for the second attention layer, the multi-head attention layer, the key value pairs are from the decoder, uh, for the encoder. So that's already the past information, so we don't need to do anything here. The only thing here we need for the encoder, we have red lenses, the padding. We have a bunch of padding here, but we also put into the encoder uh, red lens into the, this one, so that we only look, so this one only uh, look like the key value pairs is not just a padding symbol, padding token. The last one, um, the, la the, the last uh, fully connected layer, like FFN, runs things in parallel. Each time step works in parallel. We don't, so we don't pass anything here. Okay, so in this case, once, so once we block the feature information in the first multi-head attention uh, layer, then we can block any feature information there. All the other things just are in, run in parallel. We don't pass anything around. Any, any other questions? Okay, that's a little bit of a complex model, so that hope you can get, I, get the basic idea. And because in the future, you may use BERT. Like BERT only have the deco encoder here. You don't have such thing, you only have the encoder, but you kind of get an idea what's going on there. Okay, so lastly, let's show uh, the training. Well, the training is like, uh, the training is very, diff it's very similar to the sequence to sequence we have. We have nothing changed, and we can, so we have something here, but almost equal to the sequence to sequence we have before, like uh, we have, encoder, decoder, and put it in the model and the train that. It's very similar to we had before. The only thing we want to compare is compare the sequence to sequence with the tension. We rem remember that the sequence to sequence with the tension knot actually have very similar results because the training data set we have, the sequence length is pretty short. In average, five words. So adding a tension doesn't help too much. But let's see how the different component to like, uh, not, not this one. My sequence, sequence attention. Okay, let's just show the, um, firstly, you can see that, well, the time are pretty similar. So, for f 50 epochs, we take, the transformer take 33 seconds, and sequence to sequence with the tension similar 33 seconds. Okay, um, but it's hard to compare, like uh, we, we just uh, choose um, the model size so that have the same complexity, the like runtime complexity. But the, the difference here, after 50 epoch, the loss is 0 0.1, but transformer like 0 .0, uh, 0 0.035. You can see that it's a big difference, actually, like uh, a big difference. So after 50 epoch, 0 0.035, actually more than, like for sequence to sequence attention, you need to more than 150 epochs. 
So transformer converge faster. The reason is because the information is easy to pass. On the LSTN, you need to pass one by one, but the tension, you can call all the information together. So, so which kind of make the life easier. Also, the residual connections, a lot of other things make it easy to train. And so at the end, it's actually converged a little bit faster. Um, so that's kind of, um, at least for this example, we show that a transformer converges faster. So kind of think, um, for here is kind of 1.5 times faster compared to the sequence to sequence attention is roughly. So which means in default, you can, uh, where you, you know, on a larger scale, you can run even faster. So which make in the transformer, we can a little bit faster so we can train a larger data set. Yeah, once we can train a larger data set, we can try and improve the model accuracy. So that is kind of the secret score, uh, sec the secret point of uh, BERT, why um, you can get good results because the model is so huge. In the sequence sequence, it's hard to train a large um, data set. Okay. So the prediction, we are not sure, like it's actually prediction not so great. <laughs> Even the loss is good, but prediction like, uh, um, so here, only one is wrong, but here, I think, uh, yeah, well, also one is wrong, but <laughs> still, like, this one is wrong. But three things are correct. Okay, but this tiny data set, it's really hard to see the difference, but only um, tiny, like, losses decreases faster for transformer. Okay. Any more? Oh, we have any questions? Good.